So I wanted to make a video about um, basic cyanotype formula. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make several smaller videos or semi-smaller videos going over basics of different formulas and such. And we're going to build up to a bunch of different things. I want to try to do a lot of smaller videos uh, of, you know, subjects. Well, I guess I better stop rambling or it's just going to turn into a long video. <laughs> so this one is basic cyanotype formula and the formula is the um, standard it's uh this is 400 milliliters of each solution and you can double it triple it whatever uh, solution a is 25 grams of ferric ammonia citrate green i don't think it has to be green but that's what i have and 100 milliliters of distilled water and solution B is 10 grams of potassium ferrocyanide and 100 milliliters of distilled water. And now we will get into how to do it. So here's just a little breakdown of the equipment you'll need. You'll need a gram scale, a couple of measuring uh, graduated cylinders, beakers, whatever you can find. Uh, I'm using this to be able to get a more precise um, measurement but that's not necessary stirring stick um, and two brown bottles I am using the photographer's formulary bottles I bought original Sinotep solution in which will be identical to what we're making but I'm just reusing the bottle so I'll just make new solution and put it in the bottle and then I have potassium ferrocyanide and ferric ammonia citrate so we will get to mixing and all of that so first thing I'm going to do is try to mix up the or to weigh out the ammonia citrate um, powder now um, it's very light so it's going to be a big heaping amount so this is just a basic cheap gram scale and what I do recommend is getting these little cheap plastic disposable cups to put your chemistry in when you are going to weigh it so you can just hold it in there and have it weight so i'm going to turn the scale on so it'll zero out now i'm going to make 200 milliliters of solution so i need 50 grams of the citrate so that's actually going to be a substantial amount in this little cup Get it to come out here. That's 10 grams. <laughs> okay. You know, I want to make 100 milliliters because that's just going to be a lot to uh, fill up. I almost need two of these, so I'm almost at 25. Okay, that's close enough. All right, so that is the ammonia citrate measured out, and then I want to measure out the potassium ferrocyanide. So I'm going to zero this back out, and I need just 10 grams of this. This stuff tends to, like, fly around, too, so you got to watch out. I don't know what the deal with that is. But it's a lot heavier, so it's going to... Oh, see, I've got a problem here. My scale is not weighing right, so let me pour it back. And i got to wash all this off of me. Let's see. All right, so back to zero. Here's 10 grams, so I'm going to put 75 milliliters of water in each one of these, and then we will mix it in. So first we're going to do the citrate. So we put 75 milliliters of water in here, and then we're going to add the citrate, and then top it off to 100 milliliters. I don't think that's going to happen, um, but we'll see. So you just add this to the... This kind of dissolves pretty quickly, and it's... Because of the amount of it, it almost is like a syrup. So it's about, 
it's right at 100 milliliters, so we don't have to add anything to that one. We do, however, need to stir it up, make sure it's dissolved, and then that one we will pour in the bottle. I'm going to let it sit for just a second, and uh, then we'll put it in the bottle. Um, the, the ferrous cyanide is a little more of a pain to dissolve, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in all this, and then I'm going to pour a little bit of the water that's in here in here, kind of swish it around, try to um, get as much of it reclaimed as possible. And like I said, those are disposable, so that's no big deal. I want to get a different stir stick so I don't contaminate one solution with the other. Now you'll notice there's a distinct difference between A and B as far as the, the citrate is a very green, where the ferrous cyanide is a very kind of a yellowy red color. And this is the one that takes a little more to dissolve. Like I said, at first I was going to do 200 milliliters, but that's just, that's a huge heap of the uh, citrate, so I'm not going to worry about it. And this takes a minute. So basically you're going to keep mixing this till it's um, dissolved. I'm going to go ahead and top it off to 100 milliliters of water as that will kind of help it dissolve so it's just the tiniest tiniest bit that's brings it to a hundred milliliters and we will keep getting it dissolved so I'll come back after I get this completely mixed up now here's the part you have to be careful like if you're using the same bottle so a and B you should know based off of your formulas what's what but if you've forgotten which bottle See, the ferrous cyanide is going to have little bitty reddish yellow crystals from where it's recrystallized and dried. Then the citrate's almost sticky. Like I said, this is almost like a syrup. So the last step is simply add it to your existing mixture. Or if you don't have uh, if you don't have an existing mixture, if you don't have if this is from scratch, then just get a couple brown bottles and. That's what you do. So add it to your mixture. You can shake them up or not. It's not going to make that big of a difference because it's all dissolved now. But you will add them to your bottles. Close them up. And then um, let them sit overnight before you use it. So everything kind of dissolves and does all that. So that's all there is to it so that is you know let it sit overnight and it's ready to go and then in the next video i plan on making the new cyanotype formula now that one's complicated because you're using ferric oxalate instead of citrate ammonia citrate and you have to get two different you have to have the ferrous cyanide and the oxalate at two different temperatures and let it sit and crystallize and participate out and filter and all that so that'll be a more complicated one but i have not seen a video on it yet so hopefully we can get that to work and go from there so i'll see you in the next video i'm adding a quick uh, edit to the end of this i just wanted to point out that this um two-step solution or i'm sorry this standard solution for cyanotype is not just for paper this is how what you would put on glass wood metal whatever after it has been subbed proper properly which will, with gelatin which is something i plan on getting into eventually as soon as i get all the basic stuff taken care of so this is required for any future project you know i know a lot of people have done this but this is this is the bread and butter of what makes it work so that's why i wanted to go over it